The U.S.-China trade war has reignited. U.S. President Joe Biden has slapped new tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles. And we're not talking about a 10 or 20 percent tariff here. Biden has slapped a 100 percent tariff on Chinese EVs, 100 percent. Earlier, the tariff was 25 percent and it has now quadrupled. Tariffs on solar cells also going up from 25 percent to 50 percent. On certain steel and aluminum products, the tariff has gone up from 7.5% or less to 25%. These are massive hikes. All in all, the White House says the tariffs announced are estimated to hit imports worth $18 billion. The tariffs will be phased in over three years. This year, the tariffs on EVs, solar cells, syringes, needles, steel and aluminum will take effect. By 2025, tariffs on semiconductors will go up from 25% to 50%. But why now? What explains the timing of the announcement? It's a one-word answer. Elections. Elections are six months away and voters are, of course, anxious about the American economy. In fact, a Reuters Ipsos poll showing Trump has a 7% edge over Biden on economy. And with the new taxes, Biden hopes to assure his voters, especially those in the swing states like Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, that his policies on China are tougher than Donald Trump's. For months now, Trump has been criticizing Biden. The former president has claimed that Chinese EVs would kill American car industry. In March this year, Trump said that if elected to office, he would put a 100% tariff on every single car that comes from Chinese-owned manufacturing plants in China. Trump also promised to raise tax on all Chinese imports by 60%. After the announcement, Trump said that the Biden administration's new tariffs should also apply to other types of vehicles and products coming in from China. And why is that? Trump said, and I'm quoting here, because China is eating our lunch right now. He's been feeding them a long time. The White House says the timing has nothing to do with elections. In a press briefing, White House officials denied that domestic policies had influenced the decision. Instead, they pointed the finger at China. They said Bi Beijing's policies were harming the United States. Biden has accused China of flooding the, marketing, uh, flooding the market and of not competing but cheating. He also added that the increased tariffs were a response to China's overcapacity in the EV sector. Reports say China was producing 30 million EVs a year, but it could only sell some 22 to 23 million units at home. And what has China said? The Chinese foreign ministry is accusing the U.S. of bullying, adding that the tariffs will quote-unquote seriously affect the atmosphere of bilateral cooperation. An editorial in the Chinese mouthpiece Xinhua accused the U.S. of undermining fair trade and environmental protection. Let me read out a couple of lines for you. Ironically, the United States is a country that touts open economy and free trade, but its actions are against its words. It also promises that it does not seek to decouple from China and hinder China's development. But its practices tell another story. It's basically a matter of time before China announces retaliatory taxes. And in the meanwhile, the focus has shifted to Europe. What do these developments really mean for Europe? An increased pressure to act against Chinese EVs. Authorities in Europe were already deciding whether or not to impose provisional duties on EVs when Biden made his announcement. Now the pressure is on Europe to follow suit, to be tough on Chinese EVs and to significantly increase tariffs. European countries in general have great trade ties with China, a point made clear by Chinese President Xi Jinping's recent tour of the continent. EV was on the agenda of Xi Jinping's visit. He lobbied hard to kill a probe that Europe has launched to find out whether massive state subsidies have artificially deflated prices of Chinese EVs, threatening Europe's EV producers. Europe is also investigating whether China benefits from illegal subsidization. This probe was launched in October. The 5th of June is the deadline for the EU to decide whether or not it should slap Chinese EVs with anti-subsidy taxes. Experts say that there is already a feeling in Brussels that because the US has a 25% tariff on Chinese EVs, Europe 
had become China's go-to market for EVs. European ports have already turned into car parks for Chinese EVs. Freshly sl uh, slip uh, cars by Chinese uh, makers like uh, BYD and the likes. Reports say 1.3 million Chinese vehicles were exported to Europe in the first quarter of this year. It's a 33% rise. What does it mean for Europe's own car market? And what about India? Experts say with American doors now shut, China may start dumping goods in India and that is not good news for India. Let me show you some numbers here. Between 2019 and 2024, India's exports to China remained around $16.7 billion. But when it comes to imports from China, it grew from $70.32 billion to $101.75 billion. That's a 44.7% surge. Expect this number to go up now that the US-China trade war has reignited. You see, what we have here is a wider West versus China story. On one hand, while the US is slapping tariffs on Chinese goods, the UK is going to town with allegations of Chinese espionage. Earlier this week, the UK charged three men with offences under the National Security Act. One of the men worked in a London branch of Hong Kong's trade office. Another is a UK border, or a border force officer. The third is a home office immigration officer. He has also served as a Royal Marine for six years. The UK has summoned the Chinese ambassador. It is accusing China of espionage. Beijing says the allegations are groundless and slanderous. As China and the West grow further apart, there is one country that is coming closer to China like never before. I'm talking about Russia. The Russian President Vladimir Putin will be landing in China tomorrow. This will be his first foreign visit after his recent inauguration. It will also be Putin's second visit to China in just over six months. In an interview with Xinhua, Putin said, and I'm quoting here, Today, Russia-China relations have reached the highest level ever and despite the difficult global situation, continue to get stronger. Officials say Putin and Xi will discuss bilateral ties, international and regional issues. You see, Russia has become an economic lifeline for, uh, for Russia, for the country, after the West hit Moscow with economic sanctions. Russia has become China's top crude oil supplier. Oil shipments to China jumped over 24% in 2023. This is despite Western sanctions. In 2022, China and Russia declared a no-limits partnership during the upcoming visit. Putin and Xi, both in their 70s, will be taking part in an event celebrating 75 years since the Soviet Union recognized the People's Republic of China. To stay up to speed with the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.